Ladies and gentlemen, we're now going to have the session on Tibetan artists in exile. And it's my pleasure to introduce to you Tenzing Rigdol, who's a video artist and a poet. He's done sculpture, painting, collage, digital art, performance art, video installations. He has a very diverse portfolio, but one of the most interesting works which he did last year is called Our Land, Our People. He took 20,000 kilograms of soil from Tibet into Dharamsala in northern India and transferred a basketball pitch into a tiny little space of Tibetan soil where young Tibetan exiles could actually walk on their own land. He's going to come and tell us about some of his art and that particular project now. There is a single word that comprehensively defines the following. A victim, a guinea pig, an ostrich, a bird's size of a truth, Dante's inferno within the jewels of Himalaya, an avatar with 1.2 million dead and still counting. Simultaneously, the word also embraces the values of satyagraha, non-violent activism, dialogue, and interdependence. However, in recent times, the same word has been fermenting new ripples of meanings that restlessly expresses frustration, anger, youth, and the desire for independence. The word is Tibet, my country, and I'm an ongoing experience of that word, along with other six million Tibetans. I feel that in order to understand my modest expedition in the fields of art, uh, I, fe I feel the need to address my presumed axiom of my being. My artworks are signifiers, marks, and remarks of what and how I feel, and without the grammar of proper contextualization, the equation of my intended meanings to the artwork might suffer the defeat of misunderstanding. To be brief, the history of Tibet in its nutshell is China invaded Tibet, and we lost our country in 1959. Over 1.2 million Tibetans were killed by the communist China, and they still continue to do so. The world with the elephant ears turned deaf and mute, and Tibet continues to suffer. Today, I'm extremely honored for the opportunity to share some of my artworks in the presence of individuals whose deeds not only inspire me, but also reinforces and strengthens my belief in genuine human goodness. So basically, this is the map of Tibet, because many of my uh, friends in New York and all, when I talk about Tibet, they really uh, don't understand where Tibet is, how, so I take this <laughs> opportunity to share. Um, <clears throat> this is a pastel piece. Um, I'll just go through the slides slowly. Uh, this is a uh, painting, oil painting that I did right after the protest in uh, Tibet. And um, this is a photography, it's called Unhealed. And um, there's an uh, acupuncture at the back of, uh, at my back. And the dates were all the major protests uh, that happened in Tibet. And actually, uh, um, one of the museum actually uh, censored this piece because they thought it was too political. And uh, it's quite interesting. In uh, New York, actually. And um, a lot of my work deals with uh, uh, Tibetan politics. <clears throat> and um, currently, the exiled government and uh, Dalai Lama, they're all working on the idea of um, autonomy. And uh, even though they stress too much about dialogue, but there's always, up till now, has only been a monologue. And this is a piece uh, on that uh, autonomy uh, uh, idea. It's a triptych. and. Uh, uh, the middle piece has a 
a book uh, written by Dalai Lama uh, called uh, My Land and My People. Um, this is a piece, uh, actually it's surprising that uh, one of the curator in, uh, in China, Li Xingting, he organized a big Tibetan uh, art exhibition and uh, um, they accepted this piece even though the, I'm holding the book uh, by Dalai Lama, the book title is Art of Happiness and it's a collage piece. Um, so uh, sometimes it's interesting that in, in China, the independent uh, museums would allow a piece like this, but also in US, um, uh, even less political pieces are, uh, uh, suffer the self-censorship. Um, this, I was invited by um, Human Rights in China and also Students for Free Tibet to collaborate with uh, a Chinese artist, Hong Tu, uh, who was a, actually a roommate of Ai Weiwei when Ai Weiwei was in uh, New York. And we made this uh, piece when uh, Liu Xiaobo was being honored with Nobel uh, Peace Prize. And uh, so that's the piece. Um, and the, basically these are uh, just responding to what's happening in Tibet. Actually you can't see clearly here, I don't know why, but um, the, this, like the lips were, has a safety pin around it. Uh, the eyes with safety pins. And um, I also experienced that, uh, especially in the uh, US, that uh, many of the Westerners <coughs> were all interested into Buddhism and all. And many of the immigrants, on the other hand, um, wanted to be a millionaire. And so I, I played with the uh, scratch card lottery and um, so. Uh, and when I first... Uh, came in New York. Uh, the first thing that my uncle uh, gave me was a subway map and uh, said, this is how, this is the first thing that I need to learn. So I thought it's interesting and I'm, uh, yeah. <clears throat> and also, uh, at present, uh, since 2006 or seven, um, there have been uh, Tibetans' um, uh, self-immolations going on. Just uh, two or three days ago, there were two, three, I think, uh, self-immolations, and it's almost now uh, numbers in six, 60 individuals. And um, I was invited uh, along with another writer uh, for a Iowa writer's residency, and when these things were happening, and. So I instead uh, decided to paint. So I made this painting at the Writers' Residency Center. Uh, and then uh, exactly one year uh, ago, I uh, did a site-specific art, art installation in uh, Dramsala, where there's exile government and uh, most of the uh, Tibetan uh, refugees there, and the idea came uh, as an, I don't know, I think maybe like an accident, uh, but uh, my father passed away in uh, 2009 uh, because of cancer and he didn't have uh, uh, citizenship or his, basically he, he passed away stateless. So. Um, like my father, there were many who would always say, like, before I die, I want to go back uh, uh, to Tibet at least once. And somehow that stayed with me, and I started thinking, if they cannot go uh, back to Tibet, is it possible for me to bring a little piece of uh, Tibet? And I started working uh, on this, 
And um, so these are the initial uh, designs. I wanted to make the stage like I, I treated it as a, like a sculpture uh, by converting the Tibetan flag into three-dimensional stage, and um, and I thought uh, it's going to be easy because I thought, okay, there's Tibet, and if I bring it through Nepal, then there's one border, and if I get it in India, then there's you know two borders, but. Uh, later on, I learned that there are more than 60 checkpoints, and um, soil is something that uh, you're not allowed to uh, allowed to uh, transport. So, these are some of the sketches, and then the the whole process from the start to the end um, took me about 17 months. Um, yeah, there were times I was thinking, why did I get into this? <laughs> but uh, uh, but it it worked. And in the end, uh, on October twenty sixth, two thousand, uh, this is what twelve, so yeah, eleven. This uh, exhibition took place, and then. Uh, I presented a small sample to His Holiness 14 Dalai Lama, and he signed uh, with his finger, index finger, uh, Tibet, in Tibetan script. So uh, I also, uh, one of my good friend, uh, um, is making a, a film about. Uh, the soil uh, project, and I'll uh, show the trailer. <laughs> I'm working on the so-called site-specific art installation. I never went through like uh, really planning for it, but then somehow I got this idea, inspiration from my father. The sculpture itself is like a stage on which I lay the uh, soil that's from Tibet, and then I would have a request the participant or the audience to really uh, walk on it and then just uh, exhibit their feelings and express their feelings and uh, so that that's that's the uh, project
Kandamata Kura Kesha Sama Tuk Chung. Nanga goes him into Kandamata Kura get under my cash door. Okay, Tanda Bori got a dungeon to Egypt, Tango or Negodam La Yorwa. Gemi is such an angle. The Puggy area. What did Sama Tanki Pabra? Okay, Shina Para Besha. Tell me a bit more about the reaction you've got. You, I mean, you were talking about being able to display some of your work in China, but facing some kind of self-censorship in New York. How does that work? What, what did you experience? Tell us a bit more. Um, I think in China, um, uh, prior to this, um, uh, exib this uh, site-specific show, usually, uh, two or three times a year I exhibit, but um, somehow um, I think in China maybe it depends on who is organizing it. But uh, I think in Tibet, the Tibetan artists are facing censorship like really bad. But the artists in exile are uh, suffering from self-censorship from the organizations. Um, it's not that China are telling them not to do it, but they just, uh, they just bow down. <laughs> And um, so uh, today I, I learned a lot here uh, uh, with uh, other artists, uh, how they dealt with it. So I'm going to take that and uh, probably make a good fight when this thing happens again. Um, there are a lot of parallels, obviously, between your project, the Soil Project, and the Palestinian artist we saw. How did you feel looking at her work and her film? Um, I mean, normally I always like uh, other people's artwork. Mine, I always think there's something wrong. Um, um, <coughs> other than that, but... Um, Both but of them I, dealing with the issue of statelessness. Yeah, but I think um, um, I always tell, sometimes um, my friends say, oh, you're doing some um, good work for Tibet and all, and I say, that's not true. I I'm just trying to be as selfish as I can. And then when I want to be selfish, I try to analyze, and then I realize that myself um, that wants to be selfish is somehow linked with the history of Tibet, and that's how I um, get into the... Uh, lots of my work somehow becomes very political. And um, so, yeah, I, I believe... Uh, her work is great, <laughs> better than mine, so I can't say much. You're very modest. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Do you like sit down and okay. It's my pleasure now to introduce Tenzin Gumpu, who's a musician. He left Tibet at the age of five. He went to Darjeeling in India to study, and then at the age of 12, joined the Tibetan Institute of Performing Arts in Dharamsala. He spent 25 years there. He taught there, studied there, became the artistic director there. And in 1990, he moved to France. He says to broaden his cultural experience and interactions. He's a musician who's pretty talented. He plays the lute, the flute, drums. He does Tibetan opera. He does contemporary and classical guitar. And perhaps he could come on the stage now. He's going to perform for us in a minute. Can I just ask you, first of all, what you're going to perform? Tell us a bit about what you're going to do. Uh, well, uh, I'm going to perform with this uh, dance from the, west, uh, the western part of Tibet. But it's Tibet is very large. The population is very, very few. So, uh, which is part very, not far from the uh, Mount Kailash, where it gives us uh, four rivers very preciously. But it's going to be changed now. <laughs> so this is the part which I'm uh, performing with the lute, which is a national instrument. 
And uh, this so it speaks about traditionally, it speaks about the, the asking the yogis are asking for the protector, the Tara, Dharma, for their needs of three things. So, and I adapted into a present as a, the way we were born. Tibetan are born in roof of the world, what they wear, what they wear, the shoes, hats, everything I speak in these songs. Well, so you updated the, the words yes. and made them relevant to the Re issue of cultural identity. Yes, that's right. Okay, well, I really look forward to hearing this. Please okay. go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, um, Tenzin Gompo and uh, Tenzin Rinpo. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, just to quote you, the world with elephant ears has turned deaf. Let's hope they're not deaf to your music. <laughs> I think both gentlemen also wanted to make a point which we haven't really covered in detail, the issue of uh, the, their jailed colleagues inside Tibet. So just to mention that very briefly, um, singing in 
Tibetan dancing, stressing Tibetan identity would be a major problem for someone to do inside Tibet, and that's why many of your colleagues are in jail. Yes. Um, well, these days we have, uh, I mean, officially groups are being controlled, as we know. Even the White House recently, Obama went the presidential. So uh, the, there's a group of Tibetan dancers performing in the White House. Actually, they have been dressed up by Chinese uh, group. So even there's individual artists in, in the Tibet who are trying to speak about Tibet. And they, there's one song is called The Children of the Snow. Actually, it's a metaphor of Tibetan. And it's raised up for your ancestor. That he's, uh, it's called Lolo was we now in prison. And how many you can uh, visit the uh, uh, Freemus web that you can see all the, the humans watch. And also there's a, a, a guy called Champat Sring who, was, who composed a song in the honor of the Houstonist Nobel Peace Prize. It's called My Lhasa. The portal shines four directions, which means actually his one is winning the Nobel Peace Prize. So now he's been, it's said that he been died in the accident. And I don't know whether it's by really accident or we never know. And the same presumably so, for Tibetan artists as well, visual artists? Uh, yeah, um, I mean, uh, writers um, suffer a lot. I mean, um, with respect, with regards to Tibet, I think um, not only artists, I think everyone of the uh, uh, really um, uh, suffering, and um, they would also target uh, particularly the artists. I mean, um, when Mao was, um, even uh, before becoming one of the uh, leading power in the uh, Communist Party, he was a, a, uh, a propaganda manager, so he knows the power of art, and he used it uh, in Tibet as well. And um, so, um, the filmmakers uh, have been arrested, um, writers, I mean, um, and at the same time in Tibet, um, the Tibetans would rather, uh, there's kind of an underground market for uh, all this uh, censored uh, music, uh, writings and all. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's bad. Uh, and. Um, it's quite uh, difficult to put it into words and you know but yeah it's Easy. really bad easier to express in art thank you very much Tenzing Rigdal and I should point out he's got an upcoming exhibition in London which I for one will be attending thank you very much both of you gentlemen thank you, thank you.